Rink wide Vancouver, free game, post game, every game presented by Bodog from Sports Odds to free casino games. Make a play at Bodog.net. Wadden and J Pat here with you with another edition of the pregame show as the Canucks head out on a three game road trip, the 20th game of the season, J Pat, and they'll be looking for a bit of quality in the Mile High City. Yeah, and let's be honest, this is not the game of the day for many sports fans in Vancouver and around the the country, but uh, the Canucks are playing. And as you said, 20 games, one of those big round numbers, a chance to sort of assess where they are. And I think the assessment is that uh, they're not anywhere close to where they want to be. And now they're stepping up and taking on the defending Stanley Cup champ. So a big challenge in front of the Vancouver Canucks tonight as they roll into Denver for the first of three straight. Away from home, they'll be in Vegas on Saturday, and they wrap up the road trip in San Jose on Sunday. All right, let's get to the lineup change presented by Delaney's OK Tire on Fraser Highway out in Langley. Looks like a bit of a blender with the lineup, J-Pad, and of course, I think it looks like a former Av will be getting the start in goal. Yeah, Spencer Martin, and I'm sure that's a thrill for him to get a chance to face the team that uh, he came into the National Hockey League with. That was a while back. And again, we're at a point in time where Bruce Boudreaux went with Thatcher Demko. The last two looked good against Los Angeles, not so much in the third period against Vegas on Monday night. And so they've gone back to the backup, although really it is more of a job share right here, right now. So a great opportunity for Spencer Martin. It looks like Kyle Burroughs is going to draw in on defense instead of Riley Stillman. And I think a lot of fans have wanted to see that. So uh, they'll be pleased with that. And then up front, the experimentation continues for the Vancouver Canucks. It looks like Nils Hoaglander is going to come out of the press box and get a chance to go right to the top line with Bo Horvat and JT Miller. And you've got this new look third line that is a little bit of a mishmash, let's be honest. Brock Besser and the odd season that he's having, having scored in the one game so far. That was last Friday against Los Angeles. You've got Connor Garland, who has uh, seen his struggles here, now up to 11 games without a goal, so he's looking to break that. And Sheldon Dries, another former Colorado Avalanche. Uh, he'll be in the middle on that line. Curtis Lazar has been back for a couple of games and been making himself known uh, on that fourth line that uh, includes uh, Neil Zaman and Dakota Joshua, and they've had a couple of decent uh, games together uh, as a group. But uh, again, it means no room for Vasily Podkolzin, and so the first uh, round pick from 2019 looks like he's going to get to the 20-game mark watching from the press box. And the other thing there with Podkolzin is if he's not playing, he's not scoring. And he's going to arrive at the 20 game mark without a goal to his credit so far this season. Yeah, another multi goal blown lead against Vegas the other night for the Canucks. However, a chance for them to tighten things up defensively once again. Well, they have to. I mean, I think it's pretty evident that what they've been doing hasn't been working for them. The seven multi goal blown leads that have resulted in losses. And so they've done some good things to get leads, uh, but now it's about tightening up. And I just. I'd like to see more of a commitment, quite frankly, to defense, particularly from the forward group. I think the defensemen are what they are, and it's a flawed group. We know that uh, outside of Quinn Hughes, there are questions really with just about everybody that lines up and plays the position uh, for the Vancouver Canucks. But I do think that the forward group can help the defenders. I think that was some of the frustration of the head coach the other night after the loss to Vegas. And so I want to see some of these guys dig in a little harder, you know, take a man, take a body tie up a stick, whatever, make it difficult for Colorado to get to the blue paint and to those scoring areas. And so this is another opportunity for the Vancouver Canucks to show that they've learned. They talk about learning from these lessons. Well, the only way that you can truly prove it is if uh, you back it up, back up those words with actions. Uh, it's going to be a tall order against the defending Stanley Cup champs, but that's who's on the schedule for the Canucks tonight. So let's see if they can be a little better defensively in front of Spencer Martin in goal tonight. Look at that. The Canucks PK has gone three straight games without giving up a power play goal. However, this time they're going to face off against the league's best power play. Were you knocking on wood when you said that? Uh, because let's be honest, that's been such a storyline for the Canucks all season has been this porous penalty kill, but kind of quietly they have sorted things out. Now, it was just one successful penalty kill the other night against Vegas, but that's all they needed. There were very few penalties. There was one each way. So most of that game was played five on five. We'll see if there are more penalties in this hockey game, but you're right. That, to me, is the game within the game. The matchup, if you if you want, is Colorado with the best power play in the National Hockey League. It has been held without a power play goal, the Avs have, in just three games all season. So they're almost money. Six straight games with a power play goal. Uh, Kale McCarr has a power play marker in the last couple for the Avs. And so for this Canuck penalty kill, that's kind of slowly getting a little bit better. I think for me, one of the big things there is they've taken Oliver Ekman Larson off the penalty kill. That's no longer part of his duty here. And so they're turning that over to others who seem to be getting the hang of it, getting the job done. But 
yeah, this will be the real test for the Vancouver Canucks. Interesting to note, though, uh, while the Avs do have the best power play statistically, they've only scored one more power play goal than the Canucks all season long. It's just that they've had fewer opportunities, so their percentage is higher. But the Canucks feel that they can do some damage on their power play. We've seen that as well. So if Colorado is a little undisciplined, if they give the Canucks opportunities, maybe that's a way that the Vancouver Canucks can find a way to get another one of those multi-goal leads and then see if they can get it right. Now, this isn't exactly the Avs team that took home the Stanley Cup last season. They've lost a couple of key pieces, but they also have a couple of key injuries right now. Yeah, and I don't think they're as formidable as the team that ultimately hoisted the Stanley Cup, but they're still a really good team. Make no mistake about that. And they're playing well. They've won three in a row. They've won seven of their last eight. So they're on a bit of a roll here, as you'd expect an avalanche would be, uh, as they host the Canucks. Uh, But yeah, I mean, Look, Nazem Kadri and Andre Burakovsky both uh, elected to move on after winning the Stanley Cup there. And then you've got Val Nachushkin, uh, who was off to a nice start this season, but he's hurt. And Bowen Byram, the former Vancouver Giant and the fourth pick uh, in the draft a couple of years back as well. Uh, he's been banged up, and unfortunately for him, a few too many injuries uh, early in his career. When he's in there, he is a great, young, dynamic player, but uh, he's not available to them. But it does look like they get Sam Girard back on defense. So you've got Kale McCarr, you've got Sam Girard. You've got some nice pieces back there, Devon Taves as well. Uh, when I said it's not as formidable, I don't think it's as good a team as the one that won the Stanley Cup, but it's still a really good team, and it's going to be a handful for the Canucks. The other piece that they're missing is Captain Gabriel Landeskog, who uh, is celebrating a birthday today, but he won't be doing it in the lineup. Hasn't played, had knee surgery prior to the season, and so Landeskog uh, on the road to recovery, but it's going to be a while before he gets back in there. So that's a lot of missing missing pieces, but they do have Nathan McKinnon, They've got Miko Rantanen and they've got Kale McCarr and uh, any one of those guys can be. And on a lot of nights, uh, they are game breakers. So the Canucks certainly are going to have their hands full. All right, let's get to my Bodog best bet. I need a win tonight, J-Pack. I got to get myself back to 500. And I'm looking at Artiri Lekkanen under 0.5 points. And you ask, whoa, he's on a seven game heater right now. He's got eight points over those seven games. Plus he's on PP1. And he's on that top line as well, but I think all things have to come to an end at some point. I think tonight it ends for Terry Lekin and at plus 174, take the under on 0.5 points. Wow, that's a bold play just because of where he is slotted in the lineup uh, with Rand. Any guy that gets a chance to play with Nathan McKinnon, uh, the, the possibility of points uh, exists any night out there. But hey, as you said, uh, you know, you don't get points. You're not going to run a streak uh, all season long. So maybe it is the night that uh, things come to an end. We saw what the Jack Eichel line, a top line, was able to do to expose the Canucks' weaknesses on defense. Uh, I do have my concerns going up against a guy like Nathan McKinnon. If he's feeling it, uh, he can be a one-man wrecking crew. So, yeah, it's a bold play on your part, but, uh, hey, you got to dr- dare to dream, right? Isn't that uh, what they say? you got to, you know, take a risk to make it pay, and we'll see if it does pay off for you tonight. And you know me, I'm a value hunter as well. we got 75 more Bodog bucks to give away as well. Here's what you got to do. Head to Rinkwide Podcast on Twitter. Look for the post. Guess the time and the period of the game-winning goal. The closest guest will win that $75, and you got to have a Bodog account. And like I said, J-Pat, listen, even if you're just following my Bodog best bets this year, you'll be in the money. 75 bucks. 75 Bodog bucks. There for the taking. Get a guess in. Leave it in the comments. Uh, reach us to, out to us on social. Whatever the case, but don't miss out. 75 Bodog Bucks up for grabs here on the Rinkwide pregame show. All right. This is the best part of the pregame show. Who needs to do something in this game tonight? Well, I think all the Canucks defenders are going to have to do something to try to keep this Avalanche team grounded because, as I said, they're playing well. Three straight wins, seven in their last eight. And uh, Nathan McKinnon, he's so much fun to watch. I don't imagine he's a ton of fun to play against if you're on the other side. But uh, just as a spectator and a fan of the game, uh, there are a few that do it better. Uh, than the night dog, and uh, he's got the cup now to, to show for his efforts as well. And, of course, uh, Kale McCarr, there was all that talk when he and Quinn Hughes broke into the league. I think it's fair to say that Kale McCarr has sort of separated himself from just about everybody in his peer group with his performance, but uh, he's great. Quinn Hughes is having a fine season as well. So, hey, if Quinn Hughes wants to step up and do something for the Canucks, they'll take that. It's going to be a challenge for Spencer Martin. This is all the long way of getting to the fact, though, uh, another opportunity for Nils Hoaglander. Uh, He has spent too much time, I'm sure, in his mind in the press box. He's suiting up tonight, and he's going to the top line with JT Miller and Bo Horvat. We know the season that Horvat's having with his 15 goals. Miller's into double digits as well. An opportunity here for Nils Hoaglander, and you just kind of feel like uh, somebody's got to run with this opportunity because 
Uh, I saw out of Denver earlier today that Tanner Pearson, not just with the team on the trip, but skating again. And so, uh, you know, there will be another lineup decision. And if Nils Hoaglander wants to be an everyday player and a contributor, get this kind of chance, you better do something with it. So I'm looking at Nils Hoaglander, one goal as the Canucks arrive at the 20-game mark. He's got a chance to add to that total tonight. But uh, it's been a pretty underwhelming and a pretty quiet start to the season for Hoaglander. Been far too quiet for guys like Vasily Podkolzin. You know, this is the youth. This is the next wave that was supposed to surround this core group. And it just hasn't uh, gone the way that they had hoped. Certainly from a team perspective, it hasn't gone the way the Canucks had hoped 19 games into the season with just six victories. But Nils Hoaglander on the spot, on the hot seat. He's my do something guy tonight. All right. The Canucks are going to want to do something on this three game road trip. No better way to get things started with a win over the Stanley Cup champs tonight in Colorado. This has been another edition of the Rinkwide Vancouver podcast presented by Bodog. For Jeff Patterson, I'm Andrew Wadden. Remember, Rink Wide is the show that always scores.